I want to thank the chairman for hosting this hearing and uh, thank Acting Administrator uh, Perciaseppi, is that you correct? Got it. I appreciate you coming here and, uh, and answering our questions. I know I've got a number. Um, I want to start with uh, a question about ozone standards. In 2010, the EPA had proposed to change the existing ozone standard uh, that had just been put in place in 2008, hadn't yet even been implemented. Um, ultimately, I think the, uh, the standards were estimated to cost between $19 billion and $90 billion annually to our economy, and, uh, and I think they were pulled back, but uh, I know in my district that would, uh, that would bring, uh, bring levels in many of the parishes I represent into non-attainment, non uh, which, uh, which would add tremendous uh, cost and burden onto uh, to a lot of uh, families and businesses out there. I um, want to ask you, uh, first of all, when you come out with your uh, proposals next year, uh, do you intend to repropose the current standard, or are you looking at doing something similar to what you all had floated out in 2010? Well, um, as you pointed out, um, we are in the process of implementing the current standard that was uh, enacted uh, in 2008. Um, what's going on right now and, and is not completed yet is the, uh, sci the science process that goes on in front of any proposed new standard. And I, I believe the, the schedule has that happening sometime early next year, I think, as you have pointed out, or very close to the end of this year. Right. But right now, the, the, uh, the Clean Air Science Advisory uh, Council is, is in the process of reviewing uh, science documents on that. So uh, there's no a particular proposal in, in front of the administrator at this point. Will you all be taking public comment on maintaining the current OH standard? Yeah. Yes. If once, the, once that science process is over, they'll, prob I, I'm, they'll probably identify you know, a range uh, mm -hmm. and that th those will go out for public comment. All right. I want to go back to uh, that Competitive Enterprise Institute report that Congressman Barton was just talking yeah. about. This is the report. Okay. Um, I've gotten a copy of the report to your staff. Okay. It came out earlier this week. It details uh, some of the FOIA request information that, that you alluded to. Clearly, clearly your office is aware about, uh, of it because it involves lawsuits that have been going on for years. But ultimately, what they've done is compiled a list. They took many left-leaning, whatever many people would consider left-leaning groups, and they took what many would consider right-leaning groups uh, that issue FOIA requests upon the EPA and have the ability to get those fees waived. Uh, and they found, and it's, and it's categorized in this report, uh, that 92 percent of the time, 92 percent of the time, this goes back to January of 2012 through now, 92 percent of the time the EPA waived those fees for left-leaning groups, and 93 percent of the time you denied those same fee waivers to conservative-leaning groups. And so when we take this in the context of what just happened and what's just been exposed at the IRS, where uh, yesterday, USA Today's headline was, liberals get a pass. Uh, it seems like at the EPA the same thing is happening, where liberals get a pass. And, you know, and if it was just an isolated incident and maybe you can go back and look at a couple of things, uh, that might be one thing. But when you start seeing a culture of, of anti-conservative attitude by the Obama administration, it raises very troubling questions. When you see some of these numbers uh, and you look at the not only the Competitive Enterprise Institute, but also the American Tradition Institute were rejected more than 93 percent of the time. And then you go look at the, the Natural Resources Defense Council, the Sierra Club, I think, uh, what is it, the uh, Public Employees for Environmental Responsibility, they were a perfect 17 for 17 at getting their fees waived by y'all. And so a after a pattern of this, it's not just a coincidence. And so what I want to know is who makes the decisions at EPA to waive these fees? Th those decisions are made in our FOIA office, which is uh, a, career, a career program office in, in the agency. And they have criteria that they use uh, to make these decisions. And what I mentioned to uh, Mr. Barton, and, and, I'll, and I'll repeat again, it is not our policy to not apply these things. I understand. Formally. Does the assistant administrator, Ms. McCarthy, have any involvement in these fee waivers? No. Okay, let me ask you this, because one other thing that they raised, and this is something that came from uh, the uh, American Tradition Institute, I think there's a separate lawsuit going on, 
that involves instant messaging, and they're trying to get instant messaging in FOIAs, and it seems like only emails were turned over but not IMs, and I think you even issued a memo recently yeah. reminding your employees uh, that it seems like maybe in ADPA they had been using e it, IMs to try to avoid using emails to try to hide that information from FOIAs. Number one, what are you doing about making sure that instant messages are also included in FOIA requests, but also do you know of any, uh, any uh, history of destroying instant e IMs, uh, those in instant messages over at the EPA, whether they're destroyed uh, accidentally or in violation of disclosure laws? Um, I can say that the, we just changed our computer system for um, email um, that has a better instant messaging uh, uh, preservation system in it. Uh, to my knowledge, instant messaging is not widely used at EPA. Um, but uh, we are putting in place, as I suggested in my uh, memos uh, the, to the staff and to uh, others, that uh, we are putting in place a, a backup preservation system so that they... Do you know if any have been destroyed? I, not that I can, not that I know of. Thanks. I yield back. How many times, Mr. Chairman? 